Welcome to Wesley Impact. This is a television program at Wesley Mission where we share all that we do in our community services and across our congregational life with you. There's no doubt that our world has changed as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. It seems that everywhere we turn, people are talking about the pandemic, talking about how their world has changed, how they're reacting to their circumstances, hoping there won't be any ongoing negative effects from the lockdowns and the mental health challenges that many of us are facing. Amongst all that we do at Wesley Mission, we operate and manage four residential aged care locations and three retirement villages across New South Wales, empowering people to maintain full and active lives. For people who choose to stay at home, we also provide a number of care services, such as personal hygiene, meal preparation, shopping, and other everyday practical assistance. All this to empower those we serve with the freedom to live in their own homes while ever they are able. Now with the pandemic, we've had to change the way we go about providing our residential care services. And tell us more about what Wesley Mission is doing to serve our residents through this challenging season. I'll be speaking with our general manager of Wesley Home and Residential Care, Grace Chan, a little later in the program. Wesley Mission is made up of people with soft hearts, sharp minds, hard feet and open hands. In today's program, I'll also start a new series of messages looking at how God has called us to have sharp minds, minds that are focused on achieving justice. I recorded this series in Wesley Theatre earlier in the year and I'm looking forward to unpacking that with you over the coming weeks. But first, as part of our homeless services work, Wesley Mission manages a number of low-cost community housing tenancies across New South Wales. Our residents pay rent commensurate with their incomes and we do all we can to cater for their spiritual and social needs in addition to their housing needs. The team at Wesley Community Housing run a number of community engagement days and here is the first of a two-part look at our work in southwestern Sydney. We're at Miller, Western Sydney. We're having a community engagement event and we're cooking brunch for the guys here, bacon, eggs, sausages. Community engagement is where the tenants come together to engage with each other, to build community. Hong, do you want to help take some of this off? Yes. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. Today we have students from the uni studying social work. We also have Cass, who's part of my team, and we have Hong. And also, we will have Darren from the Royal Botanical Gardens coming today. He helps us with gardening for the tenants. We do gardens, and today I think he's doing a bit of a surprise, putting together a table so people can join together in community. If we work together as a team, then the tenants see that we engage well together, so therefore they will feel comfortable with us as well. How are you, David? You're looking so well today. Yeah, how are you doing? Yes, are you feeling good? I am actually, I'm feeling very good. Has anyone told you about the flat packs being made up? by, because the guys were supposed to come and clean, but now what they're going to do is spend the time that they were going to do just doing a bit of cleaning to put the flat backs together for you. Ah. So that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> My name's Darren, and I work for the Royal Botanic Gardens. We partner with Wesley Mission, they made contact with us. The program that I'm involved in is called Community Greening. This is an outreach program. So we go out into the community, we work with people who live in social housing. At the moment, I'm coming to this complex once a month. So I meet with Lisa and the team from Wesley Mission. And we come out, we support community, we work side by side with them, and we promote the health benefits of gardening and horticultural therapy. What do we vote for? We're making a table today. Hope you've got your painting skills with you. Oh, I've got some skills with me, but let's see what let's see what. It's all in the wrist. Thank you. Oh, 
This is fancy. Yeah. So I'm the cook today, am I? Hang on. Chef, no chef, no chef. The plan for today is to build a table that the guys can use in the garden. The table's been put together by Tallerwood Men's Shed. They've put probably about 95% of the table together already, and we're gonna finish it off today, find a nice spot to put it in the garden, and hopefully they'll be able to use it in their day-to-day -day activities and when we run our gardening workshops and other bits and pieces. Here's the gloves, Andy. Yep, everyone right? Too tight, there are more. Um, what we need is somebody to chop onions. We need actually another table so that we can put it near the barbecue. Lisa is the glue that holds us all together. So Lisa connects us as a team and the tenancy in the office, but then she also connects with the tenants and she's often the bridge that links the two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Depending on the day, I am the organiser. So in the context of Community Housing Day, that could be as little as organising the buses to get somewhere, as much as, uh, you know, organising the day from the start in terms of if it's a big production, like we're all going to a particular hall or the Royal Botanic Gardens for a tour. It really depends on the context of the day, but I organise from the little things to organising the shopping list, to organising the tenants, to organising the team. So in terms of if we don't have sausages and we don't have milks and all those little things, we don't have a day that's going to function and going to work. And at the end of the day, we've done a lot of work to make sure the tenants are happy and feel engaged here and feel connected. And it's as much as getting them out to the smell of onions that's important. So if we don't have onions, there's no onion smell, they're not coming out. <laughs> So I'm just marking down who's actually here, how they're going. I'm talking about what they're looking forward to today, how they're feeling, what they're looking forward to, what we can do in the future maybe. Because at the end of the day, community engagement is about those connections and making sure that they're feeling good about the event. And if they're not, we try to figure out what's going on and if we can do something else and make it better. Connection and community is so important, especially to things like mental health. Finding time to make that sense of community again and just have a chat to your neighbour. For some people, that chat to their neighbour is all they're going to have that day. So we want to make sure that those chats and that interaction and that connection is happening when we're not here. So what we're going to do is paint that black for slats to go inside this. I love connecting with people. I actually am quite shy, but... Everybody says I don't look shy, but that's because I try to go out of my way to make people feel comfortable. And I try to do to others what I'd have them do to me. This is like a little high tea. We have lemon slice, chocolate cupcakes and vanilla cupcakes. We have strawberries, chocolate biscuits, caramel biscuits, which the guys really love. We have these little cream cakes, a cherry ripe slice. We put on a high tea because the guys like to have something special. This is something that they probably wouldn't normally have every day. When they come out and join with us, have a nice cappuccino, which they wouldn't normally have in their own homes, they can come and have a cup of tea and a nice cake or a bit of fruit. I feel like it's really important for the tenant's mental health and also just for their well-being because when you connect with a person you feel cared for and loved and I also feel like we're being hospitable to them serving them making them coffees giving them food so they feel loved and cared for by us as a team oh yeah this is exciting guys a new table. And we're just going to put it just here for now. That'll do. Put our penis. Yeah. Penis? Come on, Bruce. Come over with me, please. It's going to need over two Over this coats. way. Here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a coat of paint on all these slats. And we want to try and do the three sides. So we obviously got the top here, and then we'll try and do the two sides here. But we're not going to worry about painting the bottom. Yeah, mate, go for your yeah. life. Paint away. Watch out for your shirt. George is a very experienced painter. I've seen his painting skills before. 
Can you get in there, George? Pretty much when we go out into the community, we encourage people to work with us, so we work side by side. It's a, a real team effort. Home, one for you. Both groups come along with the, the goal of supporting the residents. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. Thank you so much. We're going to do two coats, George. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit streaky. Bruce, that's fantastic. Right, hey, Lisa. Okay, Mom, we are those sharing. painted ones we're going to put in between these two bags. Yeah, I know, it's been good this morning. See, it's a bit blobby there. We just make sure we thin that out. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we'll 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 we don't have to rush. We can no, take that's our that's time. It's going to take forever. No, it's not. We'll probably have some brekkie and a bit of a feed and a bit of a chat, and then we can come back and put on the second coat. Today we're building a table, which is not usually associated with gardening, but that's something that's going to be incorporated into the gardening program. So the guys that live here will be able to use it when they're doing some gardening, when we're running workshops, even when uh, they have their morning teas and stuff, they can use that to put their food and drinks and bits and pieces on. Hey, Peter's here. Peter, I look think who it is. He's got the paintbrush. Look who it is. <laughs> This is Jane and Peter. They're both tenancy workers for this area. Dry cleaning? If you don't get it on your clothes. Who's going to pay for my dry cleaning? It's not shiny black. Well, sometimes I, go to, I might go to a complex and there'll be people coming together who have never met each other, but they've been living side by side for six months, a year. So it just provides that opportunity to bring people together. You know, there's a lot of people here today and it's all a little manic at the moment. It's fantastic and hopefully when it's all put together and it's finished, they'll all be happy with what they've achieved. If you would like to learn more about Wesley Mission, visit wesleymission.org.au. You can find help in our community services, connect with our church and congregations, discover a volunteer role that suits you, stay up to date on the latest news and information, donate to support our work and help make a positive difference in your community. You can also connect with us on social media and subscribe to receive the latest news and information about Wesley Mission directly into your inbox. Visit wesleymission.org.au. So contact Wesley Mission if we can be of help to you or a loved one anyway. Our contact details are on the screen right now. Now Grace Chan is the General Manager of Wesley Home and Residential Care and oversees a significant part of our work, a really important part of our work. And prior to the pandemic, Grace had an important role in helping people to maintain their quality of life and independent living. And since COVID-19 hit, Grace and her team have worked around the clock to help ensure we provide the highest level of care for our people in a safe and practical way. To tell us more, it's my pleasure to now welcome Grace. Grace, it's fantastic to have you here with us today. Um, before we talk about the impact that the pandemic has had on our services, tell us a little bit more about what Wesley Home Care Services is all about. Okay, um, thank you, Stuart. And Wesley Home and Residential Care have three different components. One is everybody knows that we have residential aged care and we also have our home care services where we provide services to older people, younger people with disability in their home. And obviously we also have disability services. And again, we have the in-home, in-community services as well as accommodation services for younger people with disability. So talk to us more about that in-home care support that we provide. What does that look like in practical terms? We have a lot of older people living in their own home in the community and we know that most older people want to get older in their home. They want to maintain their independence as long as possible. And quite often, as we get older, it becomes a little bit more difficult to manage our everyday affairs. So our in-home services will provide things like domestic assistance, so a bit of housekeeping or you know some shopping to make sure that they got a fresh ingredient that they need for their cooking, or sometimes help them with cooking as well. And obviously, as people get older, Sometimes they may need a bit of help for personal care um, or they may need a bit of care um, support to actually access the community. So it really depends on the individual's need that we provide a tailor-made service plan for them. Yeah, fantastic. And it's a growing proportion of Australians Absolutely. who do want to stay in their home, isn't it? Absolutely. So it gets down to really practical things like checking batteries on hearing aids and gardening and... You know, what are, what are, what are some of the things, uh, other things that, that our team do? We do a lot when you touch on hearing. Hearing is actually 
a really important thing. Another thing is about um, their vision. So people might lose their vision, lose their hearing, or sometimes it's just making sure that we go to the um, you know, um, occupational therapists, make sure that they have the right equipment to help them move around and navigate around in the home and in the community. And I think one of the very important thing is um, nursing care, for example, or allied health services. Um, when we think about accessing those services, when we're able and can move around, that's easy. But sometimes for older people, they need some additional support. It could be transport to take them there. It could be sometimes accompany them to from the car to the shop so that they feel safe. Yeah, so it's all about empowering people to, to live a quality of life. Mm, mm. Yeah, fantastic. And we're very conscious, of course, right now in the midst of a pandemic of the impact of what's been happening uh, on people's mental health. Mm. Uh, Again, can you talk to us about how we provide mental health support to people in their homes and mm, the mm. counselling services, even financial counselling? I think the thing that we hear a lot is when they can actually visit a family or family can visit them. And obviously, compared to last year, last year family were still able to visit people because the restrictions were a lot lower. And also, if you have an older aging parents who need support, you are allowed to visit them. Whereas this year, it has been a lot harder because of the restriction in some LGIs and, you know, and they can't even see their family like last year. So quite often, our older people are saying to us that they feel lonely. And that's absolutely an important thing that we have to address. So what we do is we provide more um, phone calls because, yes. again, our sometimes I think before the pandemic, um, sometimes our staff, our care and support staff are the only people they see regularly and they're very frequent sort of interval as well. And that becomes so much more important for lots of older people. Um, we provide health welfare check making sure that they're okay. And obviously we encourage people to give us a call um, if they need anything. Sometimes it's about, you know, they can't actually manage their everyday affair. They can't actually work out um, their shopping because sometimes family provide a shopping assistant and that's, yeah. you know, you know, you may buy some grocery and give it to mom and dad and never think about how much it costs. And that becomes challenging. So we actually provide um, care package if required. Mm. And we actually encourage people to just talk to us about what they need. And I think one very important thing about Wesley Mission is our chaplaincy service mm. and how closely our chaplains are with our staff as well as our clients, because that's another way that they can connect with other people and have that meaningful conversations and have that encouragement. Grace, thank you so much for joining us today. To find out more about the work that we do in the area of home and residential care, please visit the Wesley Mission website. I'll be back in just a moment. I think people are amazing. We can turn dark to light. We can fly through storms. We can change worlds but we can't always do it alone. If you need help, we could work together. Find out more at wesleymission.org.au. We are here for you. I'd like to start a new series of messages filmed in Wesley Theatre earlier this year at our anniversary service. The series continues the theme of God calling us to have soft hearts, sharp minds, hard feet and open hands. Over the next few weeks, I want to unpack what it means to have sharp minds. That is, minds focused on achieving justice. Today, I start by looking at what justice is. What does justice tell us about God and God's character and how we can all play our part in helping to achieve justice for all? Earlier this year, the uh, military in Myanmar brutally cracked down on that nation. They conducted yet another coup, violent. Brutal, awful, and just for a moment, it, it filled our TV screens only to be pushed off by other crises around the world. And in late February, in Kachin State, which is predominantly Christian, uh, the protesters came out on the streets, protesting democracy being stolen from them. And uh, many young people, old people, right across the generations, across different demographics, they all came out on the street wanting to protest the injustice that it occurred. And the response of the military, the police, well, it was predictable. It was violent. And, you know, since February, right up to about the 22nd of April, at least 800 people have been killed on the streets of Myanmar, probably many more in jails, in prisons, beaten to death. 
But as the protesters came out, they came out in their thousands, their tens of thousands. And, you know, as I said, the, the, the crackdown was brutal. It was violent. And there was a picture that came onto uh, my social media feed, of all things. And it was a picture of a Catholic nun in Kachin State. The, the protesters had come onto the streets. Her name is Sister Anne Rosa. And, and as the, the police had come out, and as she heard stories of what was happening in other parts of the nation, she decided she had to do something. She had to stand in the gap. She had to stop the violence. And so as the police drew near to the protesters who were protesting peacefully, had no weapons, she knelt on the ground before the police and she said to them, just shoot me. The protesters, they're protesting peaceful. They just want democracy, just shoot me. And just for a moment, this this photo went around the world and Sister Anne Rosa, she was interviewed afterwards. The the police didn't shoot her. They didn't exact violent revenge on the protesters, at least in that instance. But Sister Anne Rosa was interviewed afterwards by the Catholic press. And and she said, I went out on the streets in subsequent days and and I I myself held a placard that justice and democracy will prevail. And, And when I see this photo, I see an example of courageous stand against injustice. Driven by faith, a vivid example of that. You see, kneeling Anne Rosa was, Sister Anne Rosa was engaged in prophetic witness. In pleading the case of the protesters, she was engaged in prophetic speech. And in joining them on the streets in subsequent days, Sister Anne Rosa was engaged in prophetic action. You know, Vision Sunday earlier this year, I share with you that that my passionate belief is that God, as God calls us to continue the work of Jesus Christ in word, word and deed, that he's calling us to be people of soft hearts, sharp minds, hard feet and open hands. That, that we would have soft hearts, hearts softened with the compassion of Jesus. That we would have sharp minds, minds focused on achieving justice. That we would be people with hard feet, people who are prepared to go wherever, to whomever, to do whatever in order to address and meet the needs of those most in need. And that we'd be people with open hands, people who are prepared Not to cling to the legacy we have, 209 years of legacy, but people with open hands ready to extend it into this next season, ready to invest it, not protect it. Soft hearts, sharp minds, hard feet, open hands. And and then a couple of weeks later at a church dedication service, I I shared what it was that was on my heart of what it means to be people of of soft hearts, hearts softened with the compassion of Jesus. The soft hearts are those that are purpose-driven, that people are our purpose, first, second, third, and right to the end, that we're passionate about serving, that we're prayerful in serving them, that, that we're persevering, that we go the extra mile. And what I want to do today on our 209th anniversary is share with you what I believe it means for, a bit, for us to be people of sharp minds, minds focused on achieving justice. And so the first question we have to ask ourselves, what is a biblical biblical definition of justice? And and that's a big question that has to be said. First of all, the first thing we need to say is that justice reflects the, the very character, the nature, the very heart of God. That God is just, that God is perfectly fair. He's perfectly compassionate compassionate, perfectly equitable, merciful. God is right in all that God does, that God is just. And so justice or doing justice, achieving justice is is very simply put, making right that which is wrong, that which is contrary to the very will of God, the loving intention of God. Justice is making right that which is wrong, making whole that which is fractured, whatever that might be. Join me again next week when I'll continue to unpack what it means to speak for and work for justice and the notion of making right that which is wrong. There are so many injustices in our world today and so much work for us to do to bring hope and healing to all people. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you the next message in this series next week. Now, if you have any questions about the Christian faith or anything you've heard me say today, please don't hesitate to be in touch. 
My contact details are on the screen now. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for being part of Wesley Impact today. This time together, it's so important to me and I hope to see you again next week. Don't hesitate to be in touch if we can be of help to you or a loved one in any way. No problem is too big or too small for God. And at Wesley Mission, well, we are here for you. Every blessing to you. Wesley Mission walks alongside people of all ages struggling with homelessness, addictions, mental health issues and financial stress. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.